Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Kyle Busch's Lucas Oil Fontana win from 2023. So always take a quick look at the box. This is the 2023 Elite box. This is an Elite version. 2023 RCCA Elite, NASCAR 75th anniversary. Got the chrome foil logo, standard finish. It's out of 1,278 of an Elite. It's pretty high for an Elite. Standard finish, you got your same stuff on the back of the box, register your car at Lionel's Garage, and of course your copyright and such on the bottom of the box. Here is the car itself. The very nice and clean Lucas Oil paint scheme. This is one of those cars that just really works with like the very simple clean design. It doesn't always work, but you need colors as far as I'm concerned. Like there's a reason why like Logano Shell Pennzoil car like works even though it's pretty simple. It's because it's bright yellow and red still. Like, when you have just a car that's, like, a simple paint scheme and all this is, like, white with a little bit of black, it just, it's not fun. But this one has red, white, and blue. And the car is, you know, primarily a bright blue car, so it actually looks pretty nice. This was the only way to get this paint scheme last year. This was never produced otherwise, so you had to get this win. This car is back this year, and they actually are producing a clean version of it. It's basically the same. For some reason, instead of, like, having this uh, actual... Lucas Oil logo back here. This year's car just has like a white outline of the logo, which is Lucas and white lettering in the middle of it. I don't like that change. I'd rather have the whole logo than just part of the logo. But anyways, of course, just come with a few things. You have your race winning elite generic card. I don't know why I said race winning. It's just a generic elite card anyways. Got the NASCAR 75th anniversary win sticker. And here you have the race winning stack card. If you want to see that. It's funny, he just had a generic Chevrolet fire suit. He didn't get his own, like, Lucas Oil fire suit for some reason. You got what looks like a uh, COT car on the card. That is a COT car, right? Like, I'm not making that up. I'm pretty sure that's, like, a COT, COT Impala. Oh, Rowdy Energy, how we miss you. <laughs> well, miss part of, the, part of Rowdy Energy, not those ones that had the uh, lead in it. But anyways... Here you have the stats on the back of the card. Let's get back down to the car itself, do a quick 360. This, of course, was Kyle's first win with RCR. One of three wins of the season. And a lot of people think it was his final three wins based on how bad he's been running this year. RCR's been really bad off this year for some reason. He's been running like 25th to 35th, a good chunk of the year so far. Have to see if that changes. Anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Lucas Oil. You got Chevrolet Camaro, ZL1, number eight, and RCR. Down the side, you have Lucas. You got Lucas Oil Products, Incorporated. You got Net Spend down there. You got three cheat chatters and all-skill uniforms in front of the rear wheel. This does have the darker, kind of more gunmetal color rims. You got your NASCAR Cup Series, NASCAR 75th anniversary stickers right there. Got Rowdy's name on the name route with Rowdy Energy logo. Got your one winner sticker right there. On the C post, you have Bet MGM. And on the B post, you have Chevrolet, Lucas Oil, Sherwin Williams, PTC, Cometic, and KCMG. On the back, you have Lucas Oil, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1, Okuma, and number eight. Got Lucas Oil again on the deck lid and Lucas Oil on the roof. This is number 1,169. Pretty high number there. He said, this is a very high number car for an elite, but it was just that popular that Kyle finally won a race again with RCR. Didn't take very long. And now it's been taking a long time for him to win again, but whatever. Anyways, you got the same stuff down the other side. Take a look under the hood. Or not. Guess we're not taking a look under the hood. That thing is not even budging an inch. Anyways, this is an elite, so you do have a deck lid. You can tease typical fuel cell and such back there. Roof flaps, of course, do open, and there's the underside of the car if you want to see that. They still do print the uh, DIN number on the front of the car right here. It's pretty cool to see. But now let's get down to the part everyone's waiting for, and that is the damage. You see the front end is just very dusty. A lot of the cars in this race got, like, sandblasted for some reason. They're just, like, the whole front ends of the cars. There were cars that had, like, the entire, like, wrap was just, like, torn around the whole nose. They were farther back in the pack. It was hilarious. But... You can see just very, very dirty and sandblasted. I hope it's coming across on camera. See down the left side, you have a few little marks and, you know, a little rubber buildup and such. Pretty typical stuff. Little mark right there by the uh, exhaust port. Again, just dirt and grime and rubber buildup. 
You see, he looked like he was getting side drafted a couple times during the race. On the back, you see he got pushed on a few restarts or something, a few little more marks and stuff. Looks like he did scrape the wall at some point during the race with the right rear. And pretty much the same stuff all around. A few little marks on the right front too. Looks like he probably hit the wall flush at least once during the race. This does also have kind of like that Christian Eckes win where you have the little like tether from the hood flap is actually like sticking out of the car. I love when they put that on the race win die cast. This is a cool little detail if you notice it. There's some kind of little logo right there. Probably just whatever brand of windshield they use or something. I'm not sure. So not a whole lot to talk about as far as like race win damage goes. Just, you know, this is more just for the fact that it's the only way to get this paint scheme and it was his first boot with RCR. But it still has some cool details. I said I love seeing the sandblasted front. I kind of wish one of those cars that was in the back of the pack for most of the race would have won the race too. Just because it would have been cool to have like one of those cars that the entire like front end is the wrap is coming off. This is also worth noting this is the final race at Fontana at least in the way it's supposed to be, Fontana. They keep going back and forth with that short track plan, but like I said, they are completely tearing the track to shreds right now. A chunk of the front stretch and like the pit road is all that's left right now. The entire rest of the track has been torn down because it's in Southern California and they need, you know, all the, you know, money that the land takes so they can, somebody can build a huge Amazon factory or something, I'm sure. So we lost a great racetrack for some, you know, money because yay. <laughs> Anyways, if you want this card, it's actually a little bit hard to get. It is already getting rare. I would say grab it as soon as you see. If you can get it right now, I'd say grab it right now because I don't know how much longer this card is going to be around. It's already kind of going up in value a little. Being Kyle's first win, it was bound to happen. But I said, if you want this car, I would not wait too much longer because this car is probably within a year or two going to be up, you know, one of those high value cars. Remember, for all of your diecast needs, you can go to circlebdiecast.com. And if you use the code BWAC, you can get $5 off shipping on any order over $30. So go check out if you want anything. But I've been all oh, there is to say. This has been a review of Kyle Bush's Lucas Oil Fontana win from 2023. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.